Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our last week of our poetry unit. Last week, well, let's take it back two weeks. Um, two weeks ago, you learned about figurative language because there are techniques that are often found in poetry. Last week, you analyzed five fa famous poems, again, to study the characteristics of poems, figurative language use, literary techniques use. This week, you're going to learn about five specific poems, and then you're going to write those poems, okay? So, if you haven't already done so, please open up our Google Classroom, click on this week's assignment. I'm going to do that myself. Once you click on this week's assignment, you will see, let me read the message to you. This week, you will transform into poets by writing five different types of poems. An extended sin cane, a haiku, a remember when poem, five sentence poem, and rhyme poems. There's a book called Poetry Writing Unit. I want you to open their Google Slides. What you should do now, if you haven't done so already, you should be reading through each page of the slides on your own. The beginning of the book has glossary terms. Um, so things like a reminder of what metaphor is, open form, personification, all that, right? And then it's going to go into the five different poems and its characteristics. I'm not going to review the glossary with you. That's something I expect you to do because you will need it in order to produce um, adequate poems. On slide number eight, those are some poetry ideas, some topics that you can use. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to jump right into the different poems. So let's start with the first poem, which is an extended sin cane on slide number nine. Remember, if you cannot see, all you have to do is hit view, zoom, 50% or 100%. All right, I'm going to read this extended sin cane with you, okay? It is called Bus Stop. Please read along with me. If I didn't live where I live, look where I did. Stand where I stood when you saw me standing there. Would we have ever known each other's breath? If it had been a no instead of a yes, would we have ever exchanged words? Is it now or never paths are destined? Miss your stop, too late can't happen? I guess I don't know because it's not that way, but scary to wonder all of this. Me and you. Maybe I missed my first stop, and you are the never supposed to be, being in the flesh, right next to me, filling the puzzle of my life with the peace only you held. On slide number 10, it explains to you what an Eastern cane is. A sin cane has five lines. It is inspired by the Japanese haiku poem, which we will also do, don't you worry. And this, this is the format right here. Line one has two syllables. Not two words, syllables. Line two has four. Line three has six syllables. Line four has eight syllables. Line five has two syllables. So it follows the two, four, six, eight, two pattern. And I wrote an example for you. Okay. Virus. Virus. Two syllables. It took away. Four syllables. All of the excitement of your final year at Peyton. Virus. You see, I followed the format. So what you're going to do is write in the sentence in cane. You're going to follow that pattern for each stanza, right? Two, four, six, eight, two syllable pattern. But instead of just writing one stanza like I did in my example of coronavirus, you're going to have at least three. So three or more, okay? All right, next poem. We're going to have, we're going to write haikus. There are four examples for you here on slide 12. I'm just going to read one example, the third one. The calm lake whispers its secrets of solitude. Listen carefully. Then on slide 13, you have the specific characteristics. All right, it's a type of unrhymed poetry. 
that originated in Japan in the 1600s, key here is unrhymed. A haiku only has three lines and it also follows a syllable pattern. Line one has five syllables, line two has seven, line three has five. So you're doing five, seven, five. You're gonna write two haiku poems. And this time I sort of selected the topics for you. Poem one is gonna be about an object in nature and poem two is gonna be about a moment in nature. You're gonna follow the guidelines on slide number 14 to help you brainstorm. And then you're gonna write your haikus, your two haikus on slide 15. Remember, only three lines and you follow the five, seven, five syllable rule. All right, let's go to slide 16, which is your remember when poem. And I'm gonna read this example with you. This poem is called Last Questions. I remember when you used to smile at me. You had the best smile. It was a warm sunny day, but why, why did you stop? I remember when you went away. My mother said you went to a nursing home for the elderly. But Granny, why did you go? I remember when I came to visit you, you had questions in your eyes. You didn't know me anymore. Don't you remember your grandson? I remember when you left. You looked so sad lying there. You were still and wouldn't move. Whatever happened to you? I remember when I realized you were gone. I was always glad I said goodbye. But Granny, did you want to go? An unnamed eighth grader wrote that. All right, look at the guidelines on slide 17 with me. A remember when poem. All right, within this poem, each stanza, so each little paragraph has four lines. The first line of each stanza must be when, begin with the words, I remember when. And the last line of each stanza will be a question. You must incorporate figurative language and you have to have at least three stanzas. So three or more stanzas within this poem. You're gonna follow the guidelines to brainstorm by thinking about significant or important people, places, events, animals, in your life. Just what do you want to remember? Okay, because it is called a remember when poem, so you're honoring something that's significant to you. If you don't want to do that, if you don't want to get personal, it can be about any topic you want it to be. All right, I am moving on to poem number four, which is called the five senses poem. All right, slide number 19, please read along with me. Anger, terrifying body of evil on eight hairy legs, smoldering knots, a screaming blinding orange, paper made of rough crushed pebbles, slimy lettuce leaves on moldy, moldy milk cartons, long nights working for nothing at all, bitter sour taste like a twisted tongue, high pitched sounds of glass breaking. So if you haven't noticed, this person wrote about the things that made them angry. And what they did is they focus on the five senses that as humans have. So let's move on to line, slide 20. In this poem, you will describe eight items. As you describe the items, you'll tap into your five senses. You're going to write descriptions in a word or phrase to go along with it. But what's key here is that you're not going to name the thing you're describing. Don't name it. Make me guess what you're describing. To help you, because I know some of you are lost, to help you, as always, just follow my guidelines on my, or my guidelines and my prompts on slide 20 and 21. Okay, within it, if you follow it, you'll cover the five senses of sound, taste, smell, Sight here. No, where did it sound? Sorry. Okay. Getting there, guys. Last poem. 
it's the rhyme poem. This is the most, um, I guess, familiar poem that you guys are used to. You guys are used to poems rhyming. So this is it. Rhyming words are words with the same end sounds. When a poem has rhyming words at the end of its lines, these are called end rhymes. A rhyme scheme is a pattern of end rhymes in a poem. Each new sound at the end of a line is giving a letter, starting with A, then B, and so on. If an end sound repeats the end sound of an earlier line, it gets the same letter. So to practice, you're going to identify the rhyme scheme of three different poems. I did the first one for you. Summer break. The school bell rang out loud. We ran to the door, quite a crowd. Our summer days are ahead. Tomorrow we'll all stay in bed. So I looked at the last word of the first line, which is loud, and I assigned it the first letter of our alphabet, A. The next line, the last word is crowd. Crowd and loud rhyme, so I gave it the same letter. Then on the third line, the last word is ahead. Ahead does not rhyme with loud, so I gave it a new letter, which is B. Last line, bed, rhymes with ahead, so I gave it the same letter, B. So your rhyme scheme is A, A, B, B. Now you're gonna identify the rhyme scheme of the next two poems. Then you're moving on to slide 25, which is our last slide. You are going to write a rhyming poem. It can be whatever rhyme scheme you want. You can do A, A, B, B. You can do A, B, A, B. Whatever you want it to be. But it must rhyme. Your poem must have at least 10 lines. And you probably want to organize it into stanzas. In the little paragraphs. If you don't want to, you don't have to. It's just easier that way to come up with a rhyme scheme. Now remember... It is a small space on slide 25, as I mentioned in my directions to Google Classroom. If your poems, your final poems do not fit in this book, just attach a Google Doc, clearly labeling though what type of poem is it. Is it a rhyme poem, a remember when poem, a five senses poem? All right, and that's it. Besides this poetry writing book, you have some study online assignments, and then you have a Zoom meeting with me on Friday. During that Zoom meeting, you will be presenting some of your poems, and I will give you more details to follow. All right, as always, please email me or send me a text via Remind if you need help with anything. All right, guys, see you soon.